bono veritatis, to the bishops, priests, deacons, religious and faithful of the Catholic Church, greetings and apostolic blessings. In an age where truth is often obscured by deceit and falsehood, it is imperative that we reaffirm the Church's unwavering commitment to the virtue of truth. This encyclical, De Bono Veritatis, on the good of truth, aims to highlight the importance of truth, and to condemn the belief in the good of deception as a grave heresy. In contemporary society, the belief in the good of deception has become alarmingly widespread. In the realm of modern business practices, deceit is often normalized as a means to achieve profit and competitive advantage. Corporate culture frequently rewards those who can manipulate facts and present falsehoods convincingly, leading to an environment where integrity is compromised for material gain. Similarly, social and political institutions have not been immune to the allure of deceit. Political communication and diplomacy are often characterized by the strategic use of half-truths and omissions, undermining public trust and the very fabric of societal cohesion. This practice of being all things to all people, through diplomatic communication, often results in harm to the hearers, for the benefit of the deliverer of deceit and their accomplices. Furthermore, the pursuit of upward social mobility has led many to employ deceitful practices to climb social and professional ladders. This behavior not only harms individuals and communities, but also perpetuates a culture where truth is sacrificed for personal advancement. From the beginning, God revealed himself as the God of truth. God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23.19 The psalmist prays, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Psalm 25.5 The wisdom literature consistently condemns deceit. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, Proverbs 12.22, and the prophet Jeremiah laments, They refuse to know me, says the Lord. Jeremiah 9-5. In the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14-6. St. Paul exhorts the Ephesians, Therefore putting away falsehood, let everyone speak the truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4-25. The call to truth is a fundamental aspect of Christian discipleship. The early church fathers, in their wisdom, warned against the dangers of deceit. The Didache instructs, Do not be double-tongued, for a double-tongue is a snare of death. St. Augustine, in his writings against the Pelagians, underscores the necessity of truth for the integrity of the faith. In the medieval period, St. Thomas Aquinas taught that truth is a reflection of God's nature, and that deceit is inherently opposed to the divine order. The modern magisterium has also spoken clearly on this matter. Pope Pius X, in Pascendi Dominici Gregis, condemns the deceitful tactics of modernists. Similarly, Pope Pius XI, in Divini Redemptoris, decries the deceit inherent in communist ideology. Truth is an essential attribute of God. As St. John teaches, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1 5. To live in truth is to live in accordance with God's nature. Deception, by contrast, is a tool of the devil, who is a liar and the father of lies. John 8.44 The harm caused by deceit is profound. It undermines trust, sows division, and leads souls away from God. In both personal relationships and societal structures, the consequences of deceit are devastating. The belief in the good of deception is a pernicious heresy that must be named and condemned. This heresy posits that deceit can be morally justified and even beneficial. Such a belief is directly opposed to the teachings of Christ and his church. This heresy is particularly insidious because it often masquerades under the guise of being pastoral, managerial, or sensitive. These terms are weaponized to smuggle deceit into situations where truth is paramount. The result is that the hearers are misled, often harmed, while those who propagate deceit benefit, along with their associates. This behavior perpetuates a culture where deceit is rewarded and truth is marginalized. Theologically, this heresy is refuted by the consistent teaching of scripture, tradition, and the magisterium. Morally, it is shown to be destructive and contrary to the nature of God and the dignity of the human person. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, By his very nature, man seeks the truth. CCCC 2467 
the Magisterium, guided by the Holy Spirit, has the authority to teach and safeguard these truths. The continuous condemnation of deceit throughout church history affirms that belief in the goodness of deceit is incompatible with the Christian faith. The church's infallible teachings affirm the goodness and necessity of truth. Any belief or teaching that promotes deceit as good is not only a moral failing, but also a doctrinal error that strikes at the heart of the gospel. The magisterium has consistently taught that deceit is antithetical to the nature of God, who is infinitely truthful and faithful. O oh, the clergy, preach and uphold the virtue of truth. Teach against deceit and model truthfulness in all aspects of life. Be vigilant against any language or practices that smuggle deceit under the guise of pastoral care or management. To the faithful, live lives of integrity and honesty. Avoid and combat deceit in daily life. Seek the sacrament of reconciliation for times of failure and strive to grow in the virtue of truth. Be wary of language that is used to justify deceit and always strive for transparency and honesty in your interactions. In light of these teachings, we solemnly declare that belief in the good of deceit is a heresy. Those who hold and teach that deceit can be morally justified and beneficial are in grave error. Therefore, with the authority vested in us by Christ and His Church, we pronounce, let Him be anathema. In conclusion, we affirm that truth is a reflection of the nature of God, and that all the faithful are called to live in accordance with this divine attribute. Deceit, in all its forms, is incompatible with the Christian life and the teachings of the Church. In this commitment to truth, we invoke the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the seat of wisdom, and all the saints who have borne witness to the truth of Christ. May they guide us in our efforts to live in truth and to reject all forms of deceit.